Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Discover 2016 Las Vegas. Brought to you by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. Now, here's your host, Dave Vellante. We're back at HPE Discover 2016 in Las Vegas. Just coming off the keynote, Meg Whitman had a spring in her step. You know, I have to say, just as my analysis of watching HP and now HPE Discover keynotes over the last five or six years, I think it really underscored the breadth of the customer base this year. I mean, I love Jeffrey Katzenberg. I love the DreamWorks story. Uh, but this year we saw a lot of diversity. Meg said, uh, we are a digital transformation factory. And she talked about, of course, the idea economy and cloud. They introduced Dropbox. The CIO of Boeing came on. Ben Golub, the CEO of Doctor, who's a Cube alum, came on. Uh, the CISO of Microsoft was here, Home Depot. And it was really underscored the similarities, but yet the, the differences between these organizations, but the underlying unifying thread was digital transformation, uh, really as a competitive necessity, is what Meg said. So, so uh, props to Meg, you know, very, very good job on the keynote. We're going to talk about a journey, a customer journey, around storage, around integration, around data protection. David Lewis is here, he's a senior program manager of IT within Microsoft, and he's joined by uh, uh, David Jones, who's the Senior Vice President and General Manager of the Information Management and Governance Business at uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and Yogesh Agarwal, who is the VP of Strategy Solutions and Technology Marketing at HPE. Gentlemen, great to see you, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah, thank you. So David, number one, let's, uh, let's start with you. Talk a little <laughs> bit about what you do at Microsoft and your role, and you know, we'll, then we'll get into it. Great, so I'm David Lewis, and I work at the, the learning uh, services. So we create all the content and courseware for all the Microsoft technologies that we, uh, that we produce through Microsoft so that everyone in the world can enable our technologies, learn more about it, and also um, become more uh, successful in their careers. So within my group, I manage the infrastructure team, and obviously storage is a huge issue because storage is always growing. And so um, several years ago, we had several different OEM, different partner storage um, devices. And we, uh, we basically moved over to uh, three par. We were one of the first three par customers at Microsoft. And is really, it was a hesitant uh, transition initially, but now where we're at today, it has been really, really successful. So we started off as three par, and now uh, we've um, um, migrated to uh, store once for all of our backups, for all of our, um, our labs and courses and our databases that we, uh, we have on a day-to-day -day basis. And um, we've also continually deployed several other uh, three pars as well. So it's been an excellent um, transition from having multiple vendor storage uh, solutions to having one solution that will not just do the hard drives and the you know, storage, but will also do the solution with the, you know, with, uh, the management and the usability. You, know, you don't need to be an architect anymore to manage the SAN, which is really, really um, uh, important because as a manager, I don't want to pay someone a lot of money to, uh, to manage the SAN or to manage the backups. So I can have a, a young kid that is relatively new in technology and he can go and create the SAN, deploy the volumes, do all the, manage the data, and through three pars uh, management consoles, through uh, data protection, you can do everything from you know, ab absorbing the data and um, backing up the data through uh, data protector and also uh, managing the data to make sure the data is secure. So you basically run a, a not big knowledge transfer engine inside of Microsoft and we'll come back and talk about that. David Jones, every time I see you, you've, you've been promoted, so congratulations. <laughs> I don't know if it relates to coming in the cube yeah. or not, but. Uh, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, hot air rises. <laughs> yeah. so, but, but information you know, management and governance kind of used to be uh, this topic that made people go, oh, they got the general counsel yeah. involved and data is a liability, and now all of a sudden data is an asset. Yes. Right, so that's changed your world, hasn't it? Oh, dramatically, dramatically, and you're absolutely right. It, it, it really was, uh, you know, it was all about mitigating risk. That, that typically is how organizations think about it, made decisions about information management and governance solutions, things like archiving, records management, legal hold, e-discovery, all of that is, is, to, is to mitigate risk. But if you think about it today, um, and it's really driven by what's going on outside, right? It's, it's all the data being created. I mean, there's just too much of it. And so the traditional way of managing data by hauling it to a data warehouse somewhere and then analyzing it 
it just falls apart. I mean, first of all, it's too much. You just can't do it. Second is, it's an always on business. And so if you're going to make real time business decisions, you need to be able to do it by managing in place. And so where is that done? I mean, sort of within systems like your, your archive, your other retention management systems. And that's the big change, right? It's it sort of moved from mitigating risk to how do I then open up that information and provide it to be part of the analytics footprint of an organization. Now, Yogesh, when we first talked on theCUBE, you, you and I had a one-on-one -on -one conversation. You had just come on as yes. you know, running strategy, and, and, and a big part of that strategy has been all flash. You guys had some announcements today. You're really pushing on the density, obviously software-defined. Give us the quick update on what's going on in storage. Yeah, so Dave, we have done really well on the old flash data center side in the last one year. And first of all, the reason we have done well is because uh, we in innovate at the intersection of three vectors. One is affordability, second is performance, and the third is enterprise-grade data services. So the announcements uh, that you're referring to, so on the, on the flash side, the first announcement that we made is we are introducing higher density disk drives today, uh, 7.68 terabyte drives and 15.36 terabyte drives. So over the last 24 months, we have essentially been able to reduce density by 16x and, and reduce the price per gigabyte by, up by almost 40%, right? So on the affordability side, we have really driven things down. Uh, the other announcements that we have made is on the data protection side, we have uh, a product called Recovery Manager Central, which essentially gives you application-centric protection, right? And allows to move the data between a three part, from three part to store ones under the a catalog management of data protector. Uh, so there we announced application support for Oracle, for SAP HANA. And the third big announcement that we have made today uh, has to do with our composable data fabric that is not related to old flash, but essentially what we are saying is, as the world moves from the world of external storage to internal storage inside servers, which we talked about about a year ago, what you need is a storage intelligence layer with, but which gives you the right data mobility with it. So the same storage intelligence layer, you can put it on a server in a VSA form factor, it can be available in an array form factor, it can be available in a hyperconverged form factor, or in a composable form factor. So being able to compose the resources through the right intelligence layer is a major announcement we have made today. So David Lewis, when you started down this journey, uh, what was the problem that you were trying to solve? You mentioned that you, there were some concerns you had about going to three part. What were the concerns? What was the problem you were trying to solve? So I think one of the concerns or considerations was obviously price. I mean, a lot of disks are really expensive and traditionally SANs are uh, normally very, very costly. And when I first started uh, working with uh, the, uh, the pre-sales team, uh, they were offering me uh, really, really economical solutions. So I think that's the great thing about three part is that there's so many different models you can choose from that will really fit your solution. And for me, as you know, not a huge data center, but something that is you know, moderate in size, but also has a lot of room for growth, I was able to find a, a model that was really, that fit my needs. And I think that's what's really important is obviously econo um, economy is, is huge. Obviously everyone's worried about the budget. And, um, and I think the second thing is, uh, is performance. You know, three part itself is almost indestructible. Uh, over the last couple years we've had a lot of issues with their data center, with everything from the roof literally lifting up and almost blowing off, um, you know, air conditioning dying and whatnot. Regardless, the three part just chugs along. You know, if the temperature goes over 100 degrees, 110 degrees, the three part is there. It's still going. You know, if one of the shelves um, blows up, then it's still, the, the data is intact. Your, you know, your IP is secure, which is really the most important part. So after seeing those demos and seeing my, uh, uh, kind of considerations. That's really what sold me with uh, with three par. So you started with the the storage, the SAN. Mm -hmm. Three par was the gold standard for simplicity. Sure. But then you brought in the data protection piece. Is is that That's right? That's right. And, yeah. And and you were a data protector customer at the time, or no? That was I wasn't. No, I had uh, other vendors that I was using for backups. And uh, because of the kind of the um, kind of sustain the sustainability with uh, three par, I was like, all right, I'll check out store once, see how how it works, and I think the, the thing that really sold me was obviously you know, using the architecture from 3PAR. Store once is obviously going to be solid. But also looking at the, um, the use, uh, the manageability of data protector is, is phenomenal. And so, um, 
like I said before, a young kid just come up and they can manage and um, administer the, uh, the backups, which is really important. So David, Data Protector's still in your group, correct? It sure is. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, and we've had this conversation before, I just like to double check. This integration play, is that a common theme amongst your customers? And, and yeah, very much so. How are you leveraging that? Yeah, very much so. I mean, I mean, candidly, if you if you look across the you know the, the industry and in, in, in you know backup, you know, data protection software, lots of similarities. I mean any given day you can say one is better, the other is better, one scale, you know. The, the, the truth is, you know, they all do a really, really good job. And so then you begin to look at other things, right? Which, and, and a lot of those other things are things like ease of use, like supportability, you know, like the serviceability. And that's really where we're putting a lot of emphasis with Data Protect. There's something we call adaptive backup and recovery. Right, so the whole notion is that, you know, these data sets today are just growing exponentially. And so, you know, the old approach of, of just apply more resource to it, you just can't do it anymore. You know, you run out of minutes in the day. You know, you begin to, you know, to, to infringe on you know the, the operations that the, the organization is there to do. So you have to get better ways to, to be able to, to manage your information, take the active data set, reduce it, you know, back up, move some off to the side. So so there's a bunch of things that we're doing just to, you know, to, to make all of the information, all of the chores of the backup administrator really diminish, really, I mean, ideally go away, they never will, but, you know, but, but go away. And just make it super easy to use. You know, the, you know the, the, the joke is always that it's really not about backup, it's about restore. And restore is a really hard thing. You never really know until you fully restore, is it all there? But if you think about it, that's the value you sell in your customer. It's an insurance policy, that it will be there, right? And so there's a bunch of things. I mean, you can engineer all you want into the software, but if it's not easy to use, you introduce human error into it, and you can't engineer that away. And so we're trying to engineer that away with things like adaptive backup and recovery. Just make it super, super simple and easy. My right, backup is one thing, recovery is everything, is the, how the joke goes. That's right. Now, the, did I hear that the, 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 the data protector has the catalog visibility, or does that it does somewhere else? Okay, so yep. how, or are you, changing the way or leveraging that catalog in any particular way? For example, with space efficient snapshots, uh, are you changing the backup paradigm, evolving the backup paradigm? Yeah, Talk I think one of, the, um, one of the great things about data protectors, synthetic backups. So we have a lot of cold storage, a lot of data that's just very static. Um, and instead of backing up the 100 terabytes, 300 terabytes, whatever, a, a week on your full backups, you can just do a, a quick snapshot, see if there's anything changed, nope, so it goes on. So instead of taking you know, 48 to 72 hours for a backup, it might just take 30 seconds. And that's revolutionary for us. Well, one way we are changing the backup paradigm a little bit is, I would say the lines are actually blurring between primary and secondary storage now, where depending on your SLA, you may want to take the copy on primary storage, or you may want to take the copy on something like store one. So the reason we invested in a data movement capability between three power and store ones is by doing that, we can enable the backup to happen 23 X faster than any, any other mechanism, and the recovery can be 7x faster. But uh, what you can also do is, depending on your SLA, for example, if you are a DevOps person and you say, I need an application-centric copy on a Flash architecture available through the DevOps ecosystem, you want that copy to be on Flash. So that concept of a copy for a DevOps need and a copy for a backup need, these are concepts are blurring the boundary between primary and secondary storage. And the catalog has visibility on all that, so I can, I can eliminate co copies once I don't need them anymore. Because right. copy creep is a problem. I mean, you've Absolutely. Found yeah. It, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's true on, on backup copies. We were also talking just before we came on. Uh, it, it's true sort of throughout the enterprise, just yeah. on file data. Yeah. You know, sort of the proliferation. And, you know, we find all kinds, it's not in the backup arena, but, but a product called Control Point that you know, is, is in what's classified as file analytics, and it simply goes out and then crawls what you've got within your data estate, um, and you find the same copy distributed eight, 10, 12 times you know, across the enterprise. Now, in many cases, it's a copy that for legal reasons, you want to have deleted, but how do you know where it is? So this goes and finds all of that, and it lets you reduce what we call rot, sort of redundant, obsolete, trivial data. Right, you can take it and purge it from your infrastructure. Another great way, actually, to squish down your active backup. Well, defensively, 
the lead. Well, the lead. Right. So you that's bet. that's you huge. Yeah. Absolutely. You don't want and a bunch that's... of work in process stuff hanging around. That's right. Back to data as a risk before. That's right. That's right. And that's that's all within this this control point solution. You know, likewise as part of we introduced at uh, actually today and showed for the first time publicly a new product line called HPE Verity. All right, sort of single source of truth. And it's taking all of the assets we have uh, across the information governance portfolio, not the products themselves, but the, the, the core IP from those, and we've combined them all together on a, you know, on a single common uh, technology stack. So common corpus of data, common index across all of the governance portfolio, and then the applications themselves are simply portals into that information, lets you reuse the data let you use what you need when you need it and just what you need, you know, by who needs it. So, so David, how would you assess the business impact of all this great integration and this journey that you've been on? Well, obviously there's an economical impact. You know, we're paying cheaper per gigabyte with 3PAR, which is it's huge. Uh, obviously, data's always growing. We're always continually going to add more data. So the price per gig gigabyte is an, obviously it's an obvious thing that we need to you know, keep down. Um, performance itself is huge, and we've mentioned it a little bit before with uh, data duplications and uh, uh, redundancies, but also just the IOPS itself, 3PAR is a, is a beast. So it will keep running, and it, just the way that it, it works in its me uh, mechanisms, um, it will just have superior um, service compared to other partners that I've experienced. So uh, the performance is great, the price is great, and the usability, as we mentioned earlier, is great. So those are really the three things that I've seen with uh, my past experiences with my team uh, using 3PAR that has been, it's been excellent. And where's Flash fit into your roadmap? You know, uh, Flash is definitely a consideration. Uh, right now, it's more of a, um, a capacity versus performance. And because we're able to use uh, SAS drives and still have great IOPS with the 3PAR, because it works as a whole system, not just with single individual drives, um, we don't necessarily need to go down that route with us. I know that's def definitely a, a huge thing for us, you know, with when dealing with a data warehouse and big data uh, to have that performance, but we're getting uh, great performance with our, uh, our non-flash drives right now. Which is still more economical it than is. you guys. It is, yep, it's economical and we, you know, we need the space. And, and, and if and when the price crosses over, that, that will be the determining factor I think it's, for you? it's going to be inevitable, I mean obviously, you know, the price per drives are going down, the, the sizes are going up, so you just have to find, find that happy median, and again, it's, it's just kind of, you know, find the right solution for what your requirements are. So we're getting close with, I guess we're, all, we're there with 15K RPM, right? That's crossed 15K over, is right? pretty much dead, dead in right. my view. <laughs> and and I, I would say spinning media actually has hard limits beyond which the cost will become prohibitive, but Flash still has a long way to go. My other advice to David would be look at the overall benefits of Flash, Absolutely. productivity, yeah. the pro productivity for backup, yeah. right, floor space, density, all of that, then the benefits of Flash are enormous. Absolutely. Well, the yeah. whole DevOps discussion is interesting. We were talking yeah. copies before, being able to spin up current copies, you know, yeah. instead of older copies for your development team, yeah. sharing data yeah. out of Flash. Yeah. Have you seen that as, yeah. as, a, yeah. as a strong use case? And again, this integration store I love because I can make a zillion copies, space efficient copies, but they still take up space. Correct. And with the catalog, I can reduce yeah, those reduce copies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What are you seeing there? So we, uh, so I see two areas, I would say, for, one was the DevOps thing that I talked about, right, which is you take the right. copy on Flash because what the developers care about is agility. And agility comes with Flash because you are able to, uh, the developer is able to work on it faster, right? So, so that's one aspect. The second area of copy that I would say we are seeing is people want to be able to create a copy but bring compute to that copy. So that's where you see the concept of copy in the cloud. Where they're saying I want to leverage the compute power of the cloud to do that, right? So those are the two areas where I'm seeing the new world adopting copies in a different manner. All right, we have to leave it there, but David, I'll give you the last word. Customer, I guess, the last word. <laughs> uh, HPE Discover, new HP, you know, leaner, meaner, growing again. What's your, what's your take on the vibe of the show? I think it's a great show. It's a huge turnout, and there's a lot of diverse people here. There's a lot of people from a lot of different technical industries, from health to IT to uh, automotive. So a really, really broad group of people. Pretty exciting to see them all getting really excited about uh, HP products. And so obviously there's a lot of great solutions coming out, not just hardware anymore, there's solutions, which is pretty amazing compared to you know when we were young whippersnappers, that was just, HP was just hardware. So now you have the full suite with uh, HP, and so it's great to see the, 
you know, all the products that are available and all the you know, revolutionary things that HPE can do for our companies. All right, David Lewis from Microsoft, David Jones, and you. Yogesh Agarwal from HPE. Thanks very much for coming on. Really Thanks, David. Thank all you, right, Dave. Keep right there, everybody. We'll be back with our next. This is theCUBE. We're live from HPE Discover in Vegas. Be right back. Oh,